The only way you're going to have a successful community is if these people have reason to tie together. So if you've got someone over there doing a bodybuilding program, someone over there doing a weightlifting program, someone over there who's doing CrossFit, and someone over there who's just riding the bike all day, and they never kind of cross paths, they're never going to be friends. And like, Andrew, why do you have to be friends? You're talking about a good program. I'm like, yeah, I'm talking about a good program. And the best programs are the ones where everyone kind of is on the same page. Yo. A lot of you guys have been asking me to do one of these. So here's my first program review, and it's gonna be about one of the biggest ones, which is Mayhem Athlete. I have technically been a Mayhem Athlete since November, October, maybe September, like around there of 2015. And I swear to God that it's a coincidence that I'm wearing my freaking Galatian shirt right now. Right around then is when Rich released the What's Rich Doing programming. What's Rich doing was groundbreaking. He was the first one of all of these athletes out there to release his thing that got him to his level. He was the the spearhead for the movement. It was the biggest thing at the time. People like me and people everywhere were like, take my money. We'll do whatever you want in order for us to tell you how you did what you did. So I, like many, bought the program and then I followed it. I followed it to a T for about a month. I got proof. Here's an Instagram post of mine. And back at the time, I couldn't handle the volume. I was in really my second, maybe second and a half-ish year of actually doing competitive CrossFit. And I found that doing all of that stuff with two or three sessions a day ended up being too much for me. I was also running my affiliate. And when I was running my affiliate, it was an odd dynamic that I wasn't doing the workouts with my people. And I was getting the sense that they wanted to be doing workouts with me and they were leaving the program. So really way back then in 2015, I saw how important it is as an affiliate owner to be preaching and doing what you are doing. Do what you preach, do as I say and as I do, as the affiliate owner. Now, although I stopped doing what's Rich doing back then, I paid that 50 bucks a month forever. I stopped in about 2019, and I stopped in 2019 because he took it off of Wattify. I'm one of those people where I like things the way that I like things. So when things were in Wattify, I could open up the Wattify app that I had in a separate browser because I had Wattify for the gym and I had Wattify for what's rich doing. And if I wanted to look at a what's rich doing workout, maybe throw in for my team on a certain time and I'd say, Hey guys, we're going to do a froning workout today. Here it is. I could go on to Wattify and I would pick one where it would make sense with what we had done with throughout the week and we would attack that one. We could compare our scores to the froning people and it was always a cool like add on to what we were doing with my programming through my gym at that time, now known as HillerFit. So we switched over to SugarWad, and that's when I kind of cut ties with the uh, Mayhem Athlete programming. Save myself the 50 bucks a month. Do the quick math on that. 2015 to 2019, that's like 50 months at 50 bucks a month. So Mayhem, you're welcome for my $2,500 over that amount of time. But I did get quite a bit of information from it, which is all that matters to me is getting the knowledge. So I feel as if I am rather well-versed and able to speak upon the validity of the mayhem workout being as i was one of the first people to be on it i've looked at it almost i bet more than anybody in the world and albeit i don't have too much of a finger on the new mayhem athlete where they have all of these different profiles that you can click on if you're like a scaled athlete or a master's athlete or a 60 minute athlete i do know where it came from so that's what i'll speak from and then Actually today, I went into the Mayhem program and I bought a month's worth of their programming. So it's 50 bucks a month and they throw the entire gambit of workouts your way. You get, in order, Mayhem Compete, Mayhem 30, Affiliate Programming, Burger Strength, Mayhem 60, Mayhem Scaled, Masters 18, Separate Programs, Aerobic Capacity, Mayhem Gymnastics, What's Rich Doing, and Bodybuilding. So throughout all of that, I did What's Rich Doing. And back in the day, if you don't know, he would do a workout and it would be backlogged two weeks. So if you did a workout today, you would see it two weeks from now. And you would just plug in whatever he was doing. And what Rich did really well at that time was he would give you the time domains. Every once in a while, he would say, uh, oh, hey, I use this. And you could tell that it was actually coming from the guy, which is something that you don't see in a lot of programs these days. It's something that I put a lot of value into. You could tell that it was him who was doing it. So if it was something like, hey, go build a heavy power snatch, and it said, I did 260, I did 260. That was pretty cool. I really liked that. As a competitor, I would look at that and I would say, okay, he did this. And every once in a while, he would also say things like, Ellie used this weight or James Hobart did this weight. And then you would look at those things and you'd say, oh, that's really cool. So now not only is he giving me those reference points, but he was giving me those reference points. I'd use it for myself, my team. And then I would look at the programming as a whole then I would ask myself, what was it that made this guy so freaking good? Froning was somebody who would look at what was coming. He'd look at the game season. He would look at 
here we go, Dave Castro and what he was probably going to throw their way. And he would, you know, reverse engineer it and come up with what he would do. So you would see things like within a workout, they would do upwards of five, 600 double unders. They would do something like upwards of 150 toes to bar or 150 chest to bar pull-ups, or you do 150 strict handstand push-ups. If he was doing squat cleans with 135, you could expect for it anywhere from 50, if it was a quick time, upwards of 100, if it was a longer domain. Set to five, upwards of set to 20. It would always depend on the intervals that they were using in there. Rope climbs, upwards of 30 to 50 of them. If you used your legs, maybe it was even more. Burpees, 100 to 200. And you got a pretty good idea of where it was coming from when you do what I did, which was what you look at it for four freaking years. The other thing you picked up on was not only was he doing a lot of CrossFit, so he wasn't lying. It's like, I would do a strength piece. You would tell that there was a pattern in which you would follow the strength. It was upwards of maybe four to six weeks at a time, then something else would come along with the Olympic lifting, with the power lifting. But there was also something with the aerobic work. You would see the rowing and taking this one from him, which is the every minute on the minute, you would do a 200 meter row, do it for 20 minutes. And there was a stimulus intended there. There was paces you were supposed to hold. That's just something that I still do to this day because it was something you can build upon. You do it for six to eight weeks and you get better for it. You would do these interesting rowing intervals where it was maybe a 400 and then a 325 and then a 250. They had 45 second rest between them. And between those three distances, there'd be a two minute rest and you do that for three sets. It's a very common sort of rowing piece that he would use. And I'm bringing all this up because you'll see it even in today's Mayhem Athlete programming. So you'll see that Although you can tell that it's no longer input by Rich, and you can tell that it's no longer input by Rich because it would say, for example, on today, which was Wednesday, he used these power snatches, which I think it's really cool that in my programming, I bought it today. I told you I haven't looked at the stuff from since 2019. Today, just so happens that his power snatches were very, very, very similar to some power snatches that I myself programmed on Tuesday. So I'm gonna input both of those. Here's Froning's and here's mine. Those look pretty freaking similar, and I think that's pretty cool. Now, what you do notice is that it says here that it was based off of Froning's 290 power snatch. And in 2020, I believe it was. Here's Nathan McCabe. Back to Rich Froning, 290. The year he was going up against Travis Williams and the Don't Stop team. And I know that for a fact, Rich Froning cannot power snatch 290. I know that Rich Froning knows for a fact that he cannot power snatch 290. So whomever put that into the computer knows less than Rich. He knows less than me. And he's, you know, giving out a little bit of poor information to the people who may be looking at that. People like me who back in the day would see that Rich himself was putting things into the computer and getting a lot out of it. That's a negative on the program is that he's no longer the one putting it in there. But I've already told you like 20 positives on the thing. So to continue with that, the biggest one is that he has a plan. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? There's a rep range that he's looking for with every workout. There's a time domain with those rep ranges that are supposed to be done. There's a movements that build off of one another within each workout. And then there's movements that build in with each other before and after days within the workout. So if you're doing this on a Wednesday, Stuff is here on Tuesday and Thursday, which build off of that Wednesday and likely on the Monday and the Friday, two days removed from it. You can expect to see good things happening and those all kind of work in unison. You get a feeling and a sense of what's going on here. And because of all this, when people reach out to me and they see that I'm talking bad about certain programs, they'll say, well, I don't know what to do then. What should I do? And I'll tell them, well, I do have one. I'll always tell them that first, but I would not tell them that I have one. But then I say, if you don't want to follow mine, Mayhem Athlete is a very good one to follow. Tell that there's lots of work being put into it. There's more work than I could ever put into it on my own. So I'll put in a video. And within my video, that takes me quite a bit of time each week. It takes me up to four hours to make this video or I'm typing in certain things and it takes me this long to edit it and then it takes me this long to get it onto the internet. I've actually brought it down quite a bit. I kind of watered it out a little bit because it would take me so long. I used to do them every day and when I would do it every day, it would take me an hour every single day. And it almost, it does look like the Mayhem Athlete program today on SugarWad. It looks like they have a daily video that goes along with their workout. So they've got a huge team of people going into this thing. And I'm under the assumption that they've got tens of thousands of people who pay their $50 a month so they can pay these people to do stuff. It's stuff that people like me can't do. I do everything I can. I do the best that I can with my program. And I think that it's the best for people who are looking to get in as good of shape as possible in like that 50 minute to an hour and a half range. 
somewhere around there, depending on if you want to do the accessory work or not. A lot of thought into it. I know where I'm going with it. I know where I've come from. I know where you guys are feeling. I know how you feel, because I do the workouts. I got rashes on my neck from doing the workouts this morning. I don't have Kelly Starrett on my team. I don't have at the bottom of every single workout a Kelly Starrett post-workout cooldown video. I don't know how I feel about Kelly Starrett and bands and all that stuff. I don't think that it's all that important, but some people may find a lot of value in it. And if you do, it's there, and it ties along with what you did that day, which is pretty cool. They've got little community things going on. So you'll see Tasia talking about community events on the page in video format. And it looks like those are kind of copy and pasted so that you make sure you see it. People, everybody will see it. They do what I do, which is they put in a motivational quote at the, end, at the beginning of the day. Not always motivational, but sometimes I just think it's quirky. Like I've been using Batman quotes in mine. And it's just something to, you know, you open that thing up and you go, oh, Batman says I'm vengeance. And it's just kind of cool. So although I'm not very much of a fan of the Sugar Wad interface, I'm sure there's a reason for the SugarWad interface. I really much liked Wattify, but I have my own issues with Wattify. For example, today I tried to put a workout in and then when I woke up and went and looked at it, Wattify was all like spazzing out and I didn't know what to do. So I'd fix it this morning when I thought it was all good. It wasn't good. So maybe that sort of thing is just like not going to work when you've got freaking 50,000 athletes on your thing like Mayhem probably does. So now what I want to do is I'm going to pull up a couple of the old school What's Rich doing things. And he might not know this, and I don't know how many people in the world know this, but if you pay for the program on SugarWad, it pulls you back up on Wattify. And I think that's the case. I don't think this has anything to do with me having a profile from back in the day, but I'm gonna pull up 2015 workouts. So the first one that I pulled up was the one that I did on that day, which was November 24th of 2015, where it was a three round workout of 100 foot handstand walk and 50 GHD sit-ups. He gave you a target time, he gave you a time cap. Those things were very important to me because I thought, all right, I'm going to try and get there. I'm assuming that's around where he was getting. And if I'm not finishing in 18 minutes, it meant that I had to scale or I wasn't able to do it. I want to be able to do the freaking thing. I'm doing what Rich doing for a reason. Fast forward a couple of days and you've got 100 bench press reps at 185. One legless rope climb every time you put the bar down. Very cool workout. You can tell that's like, all right, do 100 bench press reps. I got to be able to do that. It says the workout's deceiving and it says good luck. It's like, well, I freaking understood it was going to be hard. Fast forward a little bit and then you can see the simplicity of the entire thing. This is the stuff that makes CrossFit workouts good. You can tell that when there's a workout with 40 deadlift, 25 bar facing burpee, 40 hang power clean at 145, 25 bar facing burpee, 40 push press and 25 bar facing burpee with a target time of 12 and a time cap of 18. The target time of 12 is just like that sweet spot for CrossFit workouts. You can see that it's a little bit of a chipper. You've got a certain number of burpees in there. On this one, it ends up being 75. Okay, you see what he did there. You see that he's got the barbell in there with different weights and different movements. The bar descends, and there's supposed to be just a power output that's supposed to be accumulated throughout that workout with that barbell. There's a session two, which is just a ski workout. You do 20 calories on the skier, you do 30 seconds of rest. Do that for 30 minutes. Sweet, simple, effective stuff. Fast forward two years and you'll get a little bit more of a sense of what's going on. So he starts to implement stuff like telling you about his Facebook page. Make sure that you're into the volume of this because he's probably taking a little bit of feedback and it's like, okay, this is hard for a lot of people so I can't make it as simple as I did. So he's evolving here. 15, 12, 9, 6, 3. Power cleans with a back pedal in between them. So this is very much how I train people these days. I'll say, hey, we're going to do these squats. And between your squats, you're going to go ahead and make sure that you get in a little bit of extra work. It can be a sled pull. It could be a sled push. It could be a bike ride. It could be, you know, hold a plank. But you're trying to get the most bang out of your buck. And the sled pull just hits the hamstrings of the posterior while you're doing all those power cleans. It's just something to do that's not going to affect. Or maybe its goal is to affect the work. But this is a very good thing that he does in his program all the way back in 2017. And then build to a heavy power clean, of course. The met count at the end of the day is as easy as 50 cal ski on the front and the back, 15 muscle ups, 15 snatches, 15 muscle ups, snatches are at 135. I can tell you right now, I don't need to do that workout to know that it's going to be brutally effective. It's simple. It's just a little chip. Target time of 10, time cap of 16. Again, he's still doing that stuff. It's still good even two years later. Fast forward another year. They're thanking you now for being a part of the Mayhem program. Follow us on Instagram. Now has like 500,000 followers or something. The workouts are still just as simple though. You'll see workouts like six rounds, 15 deadlift, 12 bar facing burpee, and 12 or nine for the females calorie assault bike. And now that and for the females number is very important. I've seen programs where they don't consider the female numbers. That's very important when you're trying to say the bike should take this long so males go quicker on the machines than the females. So there has to be a female number on there. And this workout was just deadlifts, bar facing burpees, and the assault bike. Looks a lot like 22.2, doesn't it? Now, if this is a workout that you had done, you'd say, okay, I can handle that. So I can handle this because this hurt this bad. And now I know how this is going to feel. Again, going back to fronting, knowing what's happening, and then programming for everybody. 
so that everybody has a good idea of what's coming up. The workout on that day was another chipper, believe it or not. So two, a year later, after we talked about a chipper, here's another one. 30 back squat, 30 toe to bar, 30 back squat, 30 strict handstand push up, 30 back squat, 30 bar muscle up. All the back squats were at 135, different gymnastics pieces. And I know I haven't spoken on this yet, but Froning does a lot of gymnastics work. He does probably more gymnastics work than any program that I see anywhere. A lot of these other programs are barbell, barbell, barbell. They're grunt work, grunt work, grunt work. And Froning's just doing all like hundreds and hundreds of handstand push-ups and chest bar pull-ups and burpees and stuff like that. Ring dips every single freaking week. And that is how you get some sort of a steep volume built up to maintain a uh, work output over the course of these open workouts and the regional workouts and the games workouts. So if he's doing a chipper like he did in 2014 against Scott Pancheck and there's 100 ring dips in the thing, he's going to be able to go quicker than him. He's got a bigger capacity because he's done more volume in his life that led up to that point. That's the sort of thing that you'll pick up on when you follow a program like this. You learn these things, and if you don't learn them, at least you're doing them. And then came 2019 where it said it was moving over to Sugar Watt. It says we have exciting news. I didn't think it was all that exciting. And I think that they still put him into Wattify for some time for people like me who weren't going to make the switch over. But at a certain point in time, they cut us off. And it was right around this 2019 time where it started to show. And I was like, all right, when they stop putting him into Wattify, I'm going to cut my membership. And now Wattify just looks something like this where just no workout found. And what's Rich doing or any of these freaking programs. So now let's go ahead and fast forward to present day. I like that back in the day... And the Wattify days, you could backlog and look at every single workout that's ever been put into the computer. So I got Sugar Watt here, and I've got the Mayhem app pulled up, and you can't go back any further than the day you signed up. So while I understand that that's a, done for a reason, I don't like it, but whatever, I guess. At the top of the page, he's got the little meme that I talked about. The worst thing about prison was the Dementors. I don't know, Harry Potter, I didn't watch The Office. What you'll notice in every single one of these is that they build off of one another or they were taken from one another. And that is a good thing. That is a good thing because these are all done, I'm assuming, at CrossFit Mayhem down in Cookville, Tennessee. Rich owns an affiliate. Rich has a team putting this stuff together. Rich has members at his gym. Rich has members at his gym, all of which may want to be doing different things. Now, the only way you're going to have a successful community is if these people have reason to tie together. So if ELE, what does ELE stand for? Everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. Right there up on the wall. We've got someone over there doing a bodybuilding program, someone over there doing a weightlifting program, <laughs> someone over there who's doing CrossFit, and someone over there who's just riding the bike all day. And they never kind of cross paths. They're never going to be friends. And like, Andrew, why do you have to be friends? You're talking about a good program. I'm like, yeah, I'm talking about a good program. And the best programs are the ones where everyone kind of is on the same page. It comes from the CrossFit methodology, which was way back in 2001. The level one seminar, they start telling you that it's written for the best and it's scaled for the rest. And the reason that you do that is so when you go into a CrossFit affiliate, you've got the people who are, you know, the killers, the fire breathers, and the people who are going to the games, but they can work out alongside your mom. They can work out alongside your dad or your grandma. They can work out alongside the person who just walked into the gym. And the goal of the coach or the programmer is to have workouts written or programs put together where all of those people feel the same way at the end of the day. So if you've done this, that, here or there, then you ask them, did you, how did that hurt? Was that, did that hurt pretty bad? And they're like, oh yeah, that hurt pretty bad. You're like nine out of 10 success rate. Well, you should have been 10 out of 10. Everybody should have had a very similar stimulus doing the whole thing. If one person felt like they were dying and nine people felt like, oh, that was pretty easy, then you messed up as a programmer or as a coach. So it's very cool to see that every one of these programs does tie in some way, shape, or form to one another. That's a good thing. The big one, the big selling one is Mayhem Compete. Mayhem Compete is written for the people who want to go to the games, go to the semifinals, and it's also the one where Rich will admittedly do with people most of the time. I've already spoken about how they do have a video. The video talks about the workout. They name the workouts. This one's called The Worst Thing About Prism Was The Dementors, which is also the, the, the little tag at the top of the screen. It was a 16-minute EMOM, four rounds, minute one, 20 step back lunges, 50 double unders, 10 deadlifts, and a 200 meter row on the fourth minute. Don't go over 70% intensity. That's all you got to read. You know the intent of the workout. It just kind of scoots you through it, and it's a 16 minute workout, so it's not short. And I'm assuming that in the video right there, it's telling you something similar. And there's another 20 minute EMOM 50 foot single arm overhead lunge, 50 heavy double unders, 10 deadlifts at a heavier barbell, and then a 250 row. They then have a back squat, six sets of one. 
done. And build a heavy single. They have a goblet hold, step up and push press. They've got a goblet hold, step up by 10. They've got push press, 333, three, power snatch, plus over at squat, 8642. Another session, session number two. Four sets, 400 meter run, 30 GHD set, 400 meter run, 30 toes of bar, rest one to one. That's four sets. When I look at that one, it's like, oh, there's a good old Rich Froning volume that you'll see lots of core work. Double dumbbell incline row, standing alternating dumbbell row, single arm lat pull down, supported single arm dumbbell tempo row, barbell dumbbell dra or bicep drags. And then they have the Kelly Starrett warm up video that I talked about, followed by crossover symmetry, iron scat. It took me a minute and a half to read all that stuff out. How long do you think it's going to take for you to do that? So that's for the competitive person. It says admittedly that you need two to three hours to do it done in two sessions. Okay. So this isn't for everybody. Things that are for everybody are things like the Mayhem 60. Mayhem 60 is done at a clock. So it's from zero to 12. There's a primer, like a warm up. And then you've got that same EMOM that I just talked about. There's that back squat done in there. And then there's the crossover symmetry. So the Mayhem 60, it looks a lot like the compete program, but it's done in 60 minutes and they eliminate all of that extra stuff that I had mentioned that took for freaking a minute and a half for me to even recite. There's Mayhem 30 on this Wednesday. And you'll see that there's a warm up on a four minute clock. And then they're also doing the same sort of thing where you can see the movement patterns are similar. This is what I do with my at home program. I take the workout of the day and I make it movements you can be done at home. So on their Mayhem 30, see they've got glute bridges, they've got plate hops, they've got alternating chair step ups, and then they've got toe taps and lunges. It's still done on the EMOM style, which is the same as the Mayhem Compete, it's same as the Mayhem 60, but it's all just done at home in this case. They don't have a separate video talking about how to do them at home. They do, they do have a video, it's done at Elliot Board. They've got an aerobic program, and I believe that's done by Chris Hinshaw. Here it is with an assault bike workout and an echo bike workout. No video on that one. They have a bodybuilding workout. This is one that I'm gonna think is interesting. Is this one that you would see Chris Bumstead doing? Chris Bumstead. Lower body warm up with the hip halo into back squat, five sets to 10, which is different than those six by one they were doing. Deadlift, five sets to 10. Goblet squat, one and a half reps. Nordic hamstring curl, dumbbell step through, standing barbell calf raise. So the work here is actually pretty different. So it's neat to see that they do have a program that's dedicated to bodybuilding. I like the rep ranges here. I'm curious about the rest times. No rest times written. Just build a moderate set and stay the same across. Not a big fan of that. Every bodybuilding workout should have like an intent of rest time. I like the volume. I like the rep range. So negative on the bodybuilding. Don't know who's writing that program. Bergner Strength. Who do you think that's written by? Same back squat. Six sets of one. Now you can assume that they took Bergner Strength and they input it into the compete and into the 60. Goblet squat with the step up and press up. Goblet squat, step hold, push press, three, three, three. Power snatch plus overhead squat. So now you can start to see, oh, and here's the worst thing about Dementors was prison, where it's the 16 minute AMRAP. But you can see that the compete and the 60 were all derived probably from Bergner's strength on this day. If Bergner wrote it, they're gonna put it into the other ones. There isn't specifics written for the whole thing. If that's your thing and you want a very specific program, which I don't think very many people need. I think 98% of the population don't need something specific. I mean, hell, Froning doesn't need something specific to be the best in the world. So what do you need something specific for? We'll go over to Mayhem Masters. Mayhem Masters has the same thing. The worst thing about prison was the Dementors. They've had the step backs, the double unders, the deadlifts, the deadlifts. The deadlifts go lesser on the second round instead of heavier. Oh, and they've got different, oh, no, 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 no. They have got different age groups. So they just give you recommended weights for your age group. So that's pretty cool. And at three is the deadlifts and they're all different, but they do go heavier for the second one, but they're relatively heavier depending on your age. They have it broken up into 35 to 44. They have it from 45 to 54, which is the same. From 55 to 64, which is a little bit lighter. And then from 65 plus, it's a little bit lighter of a deadlift. So they also have, have double under still for 65 plus, which I've heard is tough on the, the older jet population. And I generally kind of change that up. They have the same six sets of one for the masters. They have the same step up, push, press. They have the same hold. They have the same push, press. They have the same, oh wow, this is a lot. So masters is a competitive track. It's mayhem compete, but for masters, because it's the compete program. And it looks like this is just how they se separated it up for masters. They're except expecting these masters to do this is a perfect example of written for the best and scaled for the rest so where you would see froning in team and compete people doing the 30 ghd sit up and 30 toe to bar 
When you become 45 years old, they take those down to 25. When you become 55 to 64, they go 20, 25. And when you become 65 plus, they tell you that you're supposed to do 15 GHD sit up and 20 toes to bar. On that workout, where's the three sets? And I said, oh, look at all that classic rich running volume. It's classic volume for your age group now, which is kind of cool. I'm unfamiliar if at this point Froning is writing. I don't think he's writing. I think that they have a guy, and I think he was on the Savon podcast talking about it, and it was just so boring that I couldn't listen to it anymore. I'm going to go ahead and assume that they do the same thing for the scaled. So Mayhem scaled. Yep. It looks like they do the heavy back squat. If they do that workout, the worst thing in prison is the Dementors. They have teens, I'm assuming is the teens games track. Worst thing about prison was the Dementors. They have the back squat. They've got the goblet hold step up, push press. They've got the same GHD toe to bar workout with the running. And then of course there's what's Rich doing, which is two weeks behind. So you'll see that he did a run, burpee, box, jump over workout, some power snatches, some front squats, some accessory work, some rowing, some rowing intervals, some muscle ups, some strict press, some pull ups. And I guess that was it. <laughs> and I know on this week, it was the week of 22.1 because I went forward to Friday. I saw that Froning's like, what's Rich doing track? It's just two weeks behind that as it always has been. Okay, that was a lot. And if you want to bang, you know. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I'm not freaking sponsored by bang. But if they want to send me some, I won't be mad about it. Recapping the entire video, we went over all the tracks that the Mayhem program has to follow. Through that, you'll see that they had that little plug, which was the... Thing about Dementors workout, and a lot of the tracks did have the Dementors workout. I brought up the fact that that's important to be done throughout all of the tracks so that there's a little bit of tie-in together through the gym. Is that important as a satellite program? Nah, not really. Maybe kind of. So over the world, everyone's kind of getting a little bit of touch on one another, and maybe that's a good thing. You heard that Froning is no longer the one who plugs things into the computer. Is that that important? No, not really. I don't really know if he has too much of a say in what's going into the workouts. I do know that the what's Rich doing thing is still exactly what he's doing just two weeks behind. So perhaps it's the fact that the compete track is just two weeks behind. So it's what's Rich doing is two, peak, two weeks behind the compete track. And when he posts things to the Instagram of him and his team doing things, you'll see them doing the compete workouts on the day tying into the program on that day. Hope that makes sense. I wasn't a big fan of the bodybuilding. I liked the burger strength. I like how they took the burger strength and put it into the compete. And they took the burger strength, they put it into the Mayhem 60. I'm assuming the Mayhem 60 is probably what they use for programming at the gym. And you know what? I'm gonna do one of these. If I had to give it a scale from one to 10, CrossFit Mayhem gets a 9.2, which is pretty good. If you were to walk into an affiliate and they were to be doing Mayhem program, you should say, yes. Thank God, because you know that there's thought going on behind it. You know there's a team with just so many people throwing all of their minds into the thing, and they all care about it. I always relate this back to when I was running my affiliate. I know how much effort, how much love I was putting into the program, and when people would say stuff about it, it'd be like, oh my God, you don't know how much thought I put into the freaking thing. So that means that I can tell when something's just thrown together for the hell of it, and it really pisses me off. Mayhem doesn't piss me off. I'll be talking about some programs that piss me off if this one gets some good. So this video took me like, I don't know, five hours to put together. Well, if you liked it, subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. How did I do? Did you like how I put things together? What can I do better? Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Do one of those. Share the freaking video. Say, hey, you know, if you're looking for a program, check out this dude's video. Go watch the mayhem thing. Do the mayhem thing. And I think the bang's kicking in. So I'm going to go work out. And until, I don't know, maybe three minutes from now, I'm going to make another video. I don't know. I'm having a good time making the videos. Andrew Hiller. Goodbye.